So, Sunderland 1, Burnley 0. Wow, where do I start with that game? It was completely different to the first two games of the season. We just didn't come off out of the blocks, did we? Um, very frustrating. Sunderland was all over us the first 10, 15 minutes. Um, you know, they had a great chance uh, when the ball got played across. And uh, one of their players uh, in the centre of the box hit, hit it and it just went wide of the post. But from then on, it, you know, they had some great chances that came to where they could have been easily 2 3 nil up. And uh, they got the goal after 30 minutes. Um, but Burnley were just non-existent. Um, very, very strange. Um, yeah, it was just so bizarre just seeing the the result that we got last week to, to this, really. Um, yeah, uh, what else happened? Not a lot, really. Um, Burnley... How many shots do we have? Do we have one? One on target um, from Foster. And then we had, I think we had a header wide of the post in the first half. I think that that was it. That That's all we had, all game. I think we had one corner. It's just madness to think them sort of stats were from the game and the goals and chances we had the previous two games unbelievable even just like the lineup it, obviously there's a lot of outings going but no one in a million years probably predicted cj riley to be center half really um even though he did he did okay um he did a job um who else played sengo yeah it's just um yeah, he just needs more time, doesn't he? Um, he? He tried, you know, passing balls, tried to do some things, but he was losing the ball in midfield quite a number of times, which was quite disappointing. But he's he's young, he's, he's raw, isn't he? Um, and, yeah, the new lad at top, uh, Andreas, he didn't really give us much, did he? Um, we tried to play a few balls in behind, but they couldn't quite get there. I thought Sunderland defended quite well, actually. They uh, made it very difficult and forced us to play it back. They didn't give much room um, behind the line of defence, as where we've scored from um, in the previous games, where Brownhill's burst into the uh, space in behind. But, yeah, um, there was none of that. Uh, Sunderland were very wise to it. And when it... When they've got two banks of defence, you know, the defence and the midfield, there was just no room in gaining behind. We missed that pace at top from Coley Orshaw. I don't know where he was. I don't know why he weren't available. Has he, has he got a knock? We don't know. Same with Cullen. What's going on there? You know, is, there's some question marks whether... Could, could they be going next week? We, we have no idea. Just watching um, Steve and... Brownhill's like interviews, you know, it, it's very unsettling at the club right now. Players don't know whether they're coming or going. They're, they're frustrated. Scott Parker, I, I feel sorry for him. You know, he's, he's trying to plan this game, and he's 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 going to go for the same eleven into going into the Sunderland game, and you know, with, with the players, you know, leaving and. No doubt he's been told from the board, you can't play this player, you can't play this player, because he might be going. You know, he's he's left with uh, scraps, basically. The, the bench, I, I didn't even know half at players. Like, no offence to young lads, but I'm, I bet they were buzzing for the opportunity to be on bench. But it, the, the difference between last week and this week, unbelievable, unbelievable. But... I'm trying to be positive that Burnley will sort it out. They will get players in. Um, I knew this was going to happen. Um, as I said, I was a bit worried about the transfer window being still open. But there's still time. 
still trying to be positive, but we had we had to sell the players. Um, we had to cut it. We have to cut it down to twenty five players. So it's inevitable, really, that you know we're going to have to let go of some players, and the board are not going to turn down uh, offers where we've made double our money. So, but I don't like how the squad's getting ripped to pieces again, and then we're like going to end up bringing laws more in again. You've got to keep a good handful of players and then build from that. It looks like we just, well, we are. We're going to be starting all over again. Eh? And, you know, all this going on and we've got Blackburn Rovers next week. It's it's worrying at the minute, very worrying. Um, yeah, you, you wanted a settled team going into that game for sure. Um, so the morale of the camp doesn't look great. Um, I don't know what else to say really. It's just we've just got to stay positive. Let's see what happens. Um, but I just hope the players that we do get in, the players go out, we'll get them done early. Let the new players settle in. You know, two three days before uh, the game next week. Um, hopefully Joe Warrell will st step in there and, and play of Dar O'Shea, which I'm sure he's going to be going next week. And. Uh, yeah, just try and get some bodies in there, some experience, um, some good lads. And uh, yeah, once, once the transfer window's shut, we'll, we'll have a team, be settled, and Scott Parker can focus on the squad that he's got. And uh, hopefully we can kick on and uh, get some more points on the board. So stay positive. Come on, Burnley, we can do this. Up the Clarets. Come on.